So our first talk is, as I said, is by Georgi Vipra from University of Geneva. Uh, so take it away. Uh, yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you uh, for the introduction. And uh, well, first of all, I'd like to thank uh, the organizers for inviting me uh, to make a talk. Thank you, Alex. And uh, I would like to tell you a little bit uh, about uh, our recent work with my advisor and uh, Poland really man and Alexandra Skripchenka. Uh, I will talk about uh, limits of phrasing graphs of languages with sub-exponential complexity. And uh, let me start with some uh, basic definitions. Uh, so first of all, let, let L be a language over some finite alpha. And uh, the, alpha, the language is called factorial. Uh, if together with any words, it uh, contains solid subwords as well. And uh, it's called prolongable. If uh, every word in the language admits both left and uh, right continuations, and uh, we'll denote by also ban the set of set of all words in our, our language of size n, then the complexity function of a language is just the uh, size. Uh, of the set, so it counts the number of words of given length. Uh, then they call the language almost prolongable if the proportion of uh, the words that uh, admit of prolongable words among all words of given length tends to one, so this limit is one. And uh, our main examples of uh, such languages come from uh, uh, dynamical systems on uh, certain subshifts, uh, bi-sided or two-sided. So uh, by a subshift, I mean uh, just a closed invariant subset of uh, the space of all the sequences from elements uh, from A to N. And the language of a subshift is just the family of all its finite subwords. Uh, yeah, and uh, to a language, we can assign a sequence of so-called uh, uh, Razi graphs. Uh, each, uh, the end Razi graph is a graph whose vertice set uh, is just the set of all words of an N, and two words are connected by an arc if they are uh, a prefix and a suffix of a larger word from language of land and plus one. So this gives us a structure of a oriented graph. And it also comes with a natural labeling. We can label an arc from a, a word AW to WB by a last letter of the head that is WB. And uh, yeah, so we got either labeled Resi D graphs, or if we forget labeling, we just we'll talk about D graph, Resi D graphs, or we can even forget the orientation and just talk about Resi graphs. Uh, yeah. And uh, what we want to do, we want to consider uh, if such graph graphs have uh, some limiting object, some limiting graph, uh, and the appropriate way to study that is Benjamin Schramm convergence. Uh, let me uh, introduce that. So first we consider the space of all uh, of all rooted uh, graphs on the degree, that's G star. Uh, this is a, a compact metric space uh, with uh, natural topology. And uh, so we can consider invariant, uh, so we, we can consider probability uh, barrel probability measures on this space. And uh, suppose they are given a sequence of finite graphs. Then to that, we associate a, a sequence of probability measures on G star uh, just by choosing for each finite graph uh, a uniform vertex that we assign a root. So we say that uh, if uh, we say that measure mu on G star is a Benjamini Schramm limit of these graphs. If this measures mu i's converge uh, weakly to this measure mu, 
And in practice, it's convenient to just use the following uh, equivalence. So the sequence of graphs, GIs, converge to mu. If for any k, the distributions distribution of any neighborhood of a random vertex from GI converge to the distributions of distribution of any neighborhood of the root uh, in measurement uh, on G star. So let me mention uh, some uh, known results in this direction. First of all, in the uh, in the most classic uh, uh, case, then the language is just the language of all words. Uh, well, so it's in binary, but just all words of the alphabet of size k. Uh, then uh, the corresponding Razi graphs are called the leader graphs. That uh, uh, the very graphs, sorry. And very Benjamini sham limit is the well-known the leader graph, which happened to have uh, to be a Kelly graph of the lot lighter group as well. And more generally, uh, uh, if uh, we consider not uh, only the full shift, but uh, some subshift of fine tab, that is, uh, we just have a, a finitely many uh, prohibited finite words in our subshift, then uh, the limit of such Z graphs would be just uh, would be a measure on uh, some hemispheric product of uh, two oriented trees. Uh, I have here a picture of a uh, uh, product to two regular trees. Uh, so this is how a typical uh, limit looks like. And uh, the last uh, result that I want to mention is the case of low complexity, case of linear, rather sublinear complexity, uh, as the graphs converge to uh, uh, just a line to, to Z. Uh, uh, yeah. Then well, the main questions we'd like to answer or at least address here. And the general one, what happens in just a uh, case of arbitrary ex sub-exponential complexity. Uh, in particular, can we um, characterize that exactly uh, we have convergence of Z graphs to the line, or uh, if we can have any other Benjamin Sham limit of uh, Z graphs. And uh, uh, the following theorem un gives uh, answers the second question. So we can exactly characterize which uh, languages uh, under conditions, which languages uh, have Rezi graphs converging to, uh, uh, to Z. And the theorem is as follows. So suppose they have a factorial and almost prolongable language uh, with sub-exponential and bounding complexity, then converges convergence of Rezi graphs to the line is equivalent to uh, the following condition on the complexity function. It says that the quotient of two consecutive, consecutive values of P uh, tends to one and then go into infinity. And uh, uh, let me mention that this condition is always, uh, uh, is usually quite uh, uh, easy to check if you know the some kind of good asymptotic for asymptotics for complexity function. Uh, not always, but in many cases, as we will see, we can uh, check this property and then conclude that the RZ graph converge to Z. And the main idea of the proof is that all these three uh, properties are in fact equivalent to the following. Fact that a random vertex, a random word of an N has a unique uh, left and right continuations with high probability. And in fact, we also show that the line is the only uh, directed or non-directed, in the case of directed or non oriented or not oriented graphs, is the only uh, limit that I can have in this kind of situation. Uh, that is, if the limit of Z graphs of uh, uh, factorial, almost prolongable language with sub exponential complexity exists, then it has to be the line. Uh, okay, then next uh, we consider uh, uh, 
the labeled resi graphs. Let me recall that the, I label an edge by the last letter of its hand. So uh, having uh, given a vertex and uh, knowing a word of a vertex and the label of uh, outgoing edge, we can reconstruct the word for the head of this edge. So this is the coloring. And in this case, the, uh, any Benjamini sham limit of a sequence of labeled graphs is a measure concentrated on some labeled infinite graphs. And if we know for some reason that the underlying graph, like if the geometry converge the line Z, this is like the graph and we forget all the labels, then the Benjamini sham limit would be just a measure on the space of uh, labelings of Z. Uh, that is just a measure on the space of sequences. And Benjamini sham limit is always uh, preserved by the change of the root. So this will be uh, some stationary probability measure on the uh, space of sequences. And we can apply this to the uh, case of a uniquely ergodic subshift of sub-exponential complexity. So in this case, if we have uh, uh, this condition satisfied, so if the graph without line links uh, converge to the line, then uh, there is a limit of labeled Tracy graphs and uh, it can be identified with the, this unique invariant measure uh, on this subshift. And the idea of the proof, uh, and let me mention that uh, the similar statement for uh, a linear case for linear complexity was uh, uh, proved by Drummond in his uh, thesis uh, some time ago. And this is a more general statement. And the idea of the proof uh, is that unique ergodicity implies the uniform frequency condition for the words. That means that any finite words has a certain frequency in every big uh, stretch of any big word. And this together with the fact that the geometry of our graphs converge to the line uh, makes it possible to calculate the distribution of the possible kind neighbors of the random uh, word of an n, and this gives the desired convergence in this case. Uh, well, as I mentioned, uh, we also consider the application of this theory to languages coming from uh, different kinds of subshifts. And uh, first, we need to check that they satisfy our conditions uh, of uh, fact, like the language has to be factorial and almost prolongable for everything to work properly. And in fact, uh, almost every subshift satisfies these properties. And in fact, any subshift is factorial. Uh, language of any subshift is factorial just by definition. And uh, any la language of any two-sided subshift is prolongable also uh, by definition. The little bit harder point is that any language of a one-sided subshift that has a finite subset with a dense orbit is almost prolongable. This includes minimal subshifts and uh, lots of others. So to all these situations, we can apply in general uh, previous theorems. Uh, but first, uh, we show the following result that says that if we have just a bound for a sufficient bound for asymptotics uh, of our complexity function, then we, we can conclude uh, the same, that RC graphs converge to the line. So what we need, we need one of the three of the following three conditions to be satisfied. Uh, so we either need uh, that the complexity grows slower than n to the four thirds, or uh, if it's asymptotically uh, equivalent up to two different constants to some polynomial growth with uh, power less than uh, one and a half, uh, or if it's uh, strictly asymptotically equivalent to some given any polynomial growth. Then uh, the conclusion of the first theorem is true, then the uh, Resi graphs 
of the subshift converge to the line. And this can, we can apply to a bunch of uh, dynamical examples. Uh, uh, let me mention some of them. Uh, for interval exchange transformations, there we just uh, have a finite number of inter subintervals of a uh, unit interval and the literally exchange them in some order. Uh, this transformation has a linear or rather sublinear complexity. And uh, hence it's uh, as the graphs converge to line. Uh, a little bit more general case of uh, interval translation mappings where the images can of these intervals can overlap. Uh, this situation is uh, uh, more harder, and the general complexity can be polynomial, uh, which does not imply polynomial with different constant. I mean, uh, and this is general does not imply our condition. Uh, but for certain types uh, of interval translation mappings and varying through its koi type, uh, this condition is satisfied and they, they are uniquely ergodic. So we get uh, uh, some geometrical description of this uniquely, uh, of this uh, unique ergodic measure uh, for this subshift. Uh, another series of examples if the please subshift. Uh, Simple triplet subshift have a linear complexity and uniquely ergodic, so we can apply both theorems there. And in general, one can construct uh, uh, for any sufficiently regular or function uh, uh, with certain asymptotics. One can construct a triplet subshift with this complexity, with complexity symptotically equivalent to this function. Uh, so we have. Lots of examples examples there. The complexity of the place subshift grows slower than and we four thirds. And the last example I'd like to mention is uh, uh, billiard. It's a very natural system that you uh, have just a polygon and you uh, uh, label all the uh, edges of the polygon by the letters. And, uh, you have a ball that moves in a straight line and the base reflection rule. Uh, and you encode every orbit of the ball by a sequence of words, by a sequence of uh, letters, you get an infinite word and uh, the set of all possible uh, orbits encoded in such way gives you a subshift, which is called the big yard system. And uh, in this case, the complexity function is actually uh, your size n cubed, and uh, and it satisfies uh, our uh, our condition. So the uh, C graphs converge to the line. And finally, we consider an example uh, of uh, not a uniquely ergodic system. Uh, there we cannot apply our theorem uh, for convergence of labeled graphs. Uh, namely, we consider a recent example by Kassain and Cabaret. They constructed a uniformly recurrent uh, word with, uh, with complexity bounded by 3L plus 1 and not uniquely ergodic. Uh, hence, it has only two ergodic, exactly two ergodic invariant measures. And their construction is quite simple. Uh, let me just say a couple of words. Uh, uh, so they construct uh, two sequences of uh, uh, finite words uh, inductively. So starting from uh, uh, u0 uh, to be 0 and v0 to be 1. And then uh, next, u uh, i plus 1 uh, is a concatenation of bunch of u's, ui's, and vi's. They are the number of uh, ui's is over, overwhelmingly uh, higher than the number of vi's. And vi plus y is constructed in a similar way, uh, but now the number of vi's is much bigger than the number of ui's. So by choosing the parameters, uh, this number of uh, these numbers, the powers, 
uh, sufficiently fast growing uh, like this in their paper, it's uh, sub exponentially, uh, super exponentially growing sequences. Uh, we can obtain uh, the proper, uh, we can obtain the desired word as a limit uh, of use, say. And uh, for this example, uh, I can share a little bit of how was the investigation uh, went. Uh, so first of all, since its complexity is sublinear, then the just the unlabeled uh, Rasi graphs converge to the line. Uh, but in fact, the labeled graphs of the subshift do not converge anywhere. Uh, so what can we do in this case or in general? Uh, well, we can consider a almost prolongable language. Uh, we can consider subsequential limits. And in fact, this works for any uh, uh, subshift of sub-exponential complexity, uh, well, whose language is almost prolongable. In fact, uh, we can always find a subsequence such that uh, uh, over this subsequence, we, there exists a Benjamin Isham limit of uh, Razik graphs that can be identified to the invariant measure for the subshift. And so this, this particular example of uh, Kassin in Kabare, uh, we showed that there are continuum, uh, there are continuum different subsequential Benjamin Isham limits. Uh, but we don't know if uh, uh, there is, uh, we can obtain an ergodic measure in such a way. So all of this raises a couple of uh, questions I'd like to answer. And uh, uh, first of all, uh, can we uh, can we find an uh, an ergodic measure as a limit of labeled Trezi graphs in uh, this Kassen cabaret example or in general? And uh, uh, the other question is how this set of this particular set of invariant probability measures uh, look from geometric perspective. Say for the uh, for this example by Kassin and Cabaret, uh, there are only two regadic invariant measures. So all invariant probability measures, they form just a, a segment and uh, all the subsequential, lim subsequential limits, they are a subsegment in this segment, but we don't know if it uh, contains the ends uh, of the interval. And one could, could ask uh, about geometric properties of this set in general, how they uh, behave in the simplex of all invariant measures, et cetera. Well, I think I'd like to stop here. Thank you very much uh, uh, for your attention. I would like to, uh, uh, I would be glad to answer your questions. OK. Uh... Let's thank uh, Georgi. Now, are there any are there any questions for the speaker? Okay. If no one has any questions, then uh, okay. Uh, so, what? Uh, what what is the next what is the next step in your research? What would be the ne next problem that you're going to try to answer? So you had some open questions at the end. Uh, is that the next step for you? Yeah, that uh, would be. I mean, there is a uh, as I mentioned, this particular example is not fully investigated, uh, and these questions are also uh, yeah. So basically, this is the direction uh, I plan to move towards. Mm -hmm. And uh, I suppose maybe I'll ask a question that might be stupid, but uh, in the talk you're, you're, you're mentioning about resi graphs uh, converging yeah. to a line, is that, or if they converge, is that all they can converge to or can they converge to things that are crazy or? Uh, the whole sequence can only converge to the line, uh, mm -hmm. like this result, mm -hmm. uh, but you can oh, have something yeah, but you can have something weird in between 
then there is no convergence at all. But you have uh, along some sequences, you may have converges to some weird things. Uh, we don't have an example of such behavior, uh, but it's uh, interesting to look uh, in that as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, if the proper limit exists, it should be like it has to be. Okay, thank you. Thank uh, you for questions. Are there any more questions for Gyogi? Okay, if there are no more questions, let's speak, thank the speaker one more time.